Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter, well, we're going to have another look at how a software of choice. We're going to do a, a software tutorial on DOE Pro because I was with a client this week and I realized that in my DOE tutorials, I'd not shown anyone how to set up a DOE, a three level central composite DOE using DOE Pro. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, it's back to a, a software tutorial. So it's setting up a central composite design using DOE Pro. Now there is a video where we are analyzing a central composite design. It's in the um, uh, it's in the videos about design of experiments. So if you go to my channel and you take a look, you can find videos about how to, anal how to analyze a central composite, also how to augment the central composite. But what there's not is just a straightforward video showing you how to set one up from first principles if you're going to go straight to the central composite design. And because there's a little bit of technicality in the central composite, it's worth just doing this as an extra, uh, as an extra tutorial. So we've got DOE Pro here. You can see I've got the software, I've got the software open. And like most of the setup, we're going to go to create design and we're going to click on the computer aided menu. That opens the window for us and of course the window then says well okay what would you like to do two level or three level you can see I can change this little radio button here I'm obviously going to go three level because the central composite is a three level design so let me pick three level and then it asks me the question is it quantitative only well if I check that little radio button there I get the central composite as a choice so you can see, look, four factor central composite design, I can easily choose that. And that's what I'm going to choose. So I click on that and it then starts to ask me questions about what variables do I want? And, but it also asks me how many center points do I want and what alpha value do I want? Now let's talk about the alpha value because the central composite design has a very special pattern. If you look at this diagram here, you can see that what we're going to do, we are going to test the eight corner points. So we're going to test the corner points of the DOE. So a, a normal two level DOE, part of it in the central composite is a normal two level full factorial. So we're going to test those eight corner points. But then what it wants me to do, it wants me to test at these axial points. You can see the yellow dots through the center. It wants me to test right in the middle of the design space as well. And these axial points, these yellow dots are defined by the alpha value that you choose. Now the alpha value that's being recommended is 1.63. So let's talk about the alpha value and what it's actually trying to do, what it's, what it's about. So let's look at a diagram. What the central composite design is trying to do, if I put a, if I put a circle up, the two level test, the box that you see, looks like that. So you're testing the points that touch that circle. Now this would actually be a sphere. I'm just taking a slice right through the middle of the sphere and we're just looking at it as a section. But this would be a sphere. So the 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 normal full factorial in mean the way this is just four points would be a two to the two. So the two to the two full factorial two level points look like that. Now the alpha values, the yellow points are through the middle here, like this. So there's a point there. There's a point there. And of course, there's also 
midpoints. So actually, if you look at the central composite, we're not actually testing. If you do a proper central composite design, you are not actually testing at uh, three levels. You're actually testing at five levels, potentially. So you're testing one, two, three, four, five, five levels across a particular scale. Now, why 163? Well, 163 takes you, to the, takes you to the edge of the sphere. And what we've got here is all of these points, look, all touch the surface of the sphere. Now, why is that a good property? This is what mathematicians want you to do. Why is that a good property? Well, because, look, that distance and that distance and that and that and that they are all equidistant from the middle. And what that means, because they are all equidistant, they all have an equal effect on the error in the model. So if you've got some tests which are closer and some tests which are further away, the one that's further away has a chance to put more error it's having more of a, a leverage because of the, effectively, if you think about it, the lever is longer. Um, so the mathematicians would like us to try and put these tests around that sphere. And so they ask us to put the alpha value at 163. Now, if you can do that, that's great. But sometimes it's not possible to go out on these extreme points. So what we actually do is the central composite face design, which you can see here, look, in this diagram. And what we've now done, we've pulled those yellow points back from 163, and they are now sitting on the face of the design space like a number five. Now that would be, so if you put an alpha value of 163, you do the proper central composite. If you do an alpha value of one in the software here, what you are creating is the central composite face design. And now, of course, what you're doing is you're, you're testing here on the faces, which, of course, violates the mathematical principle now of everything being equidistant from the center. But to be honest, that problem exists anyway because if you 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 are going to decide on a design space so you are going to decide what the highs and the lows so if this is time here and you've gone five and ten for the high and the low and then this is temperature here and you've gone 70 and 90 by the very fact that you've chosen 5 and 10 and 70 and 90, those values in and of themselves might push the process so much more. So even though this looks like 5 seconds, maybe the process is really sensitive. Maybe the process is really sensitive to time, and therefore a tiny little amount of shift in the time is going to push so much more error into the model and into the mathematics. So even though it looks like we're doing this equidistant thing and they all have an equal effect, that's actually not true in physics. It, it doesn't follow that, that every, every lever that you've, you, you lean on is being leaned on to an, an equal quantity. And therefore, does it really matter if you violate the 163 and go for the face design? No, not at all. And the face design is what I normally use because I'm normally augmenting. I've normally made the blue box as big as I possibly can anyway, and I can't go out another 60% outside the box. So now when you set this up, you go, how many center points do you want? How many points do you want to put in the middle here? How many center points do you want? And what is the alpha value? And if you leave the alpha value at one, you will get a central composite face design like this diagram here. Then, of course, you can tell it the highs and the lows, what sample size you want and how many responses you want. And if you click on those, if I just click through this, here's the central composite design setup, waiting for all the data and waiting for the analysis. 
Okay, that is the central composite design, either face or with the full alpha value hitting all the points on the sphere. That's the central composite design using DOE Pro. If you want any questions about the software, you want any questions about Six Sigma, please leave some comments, send me an email. I'm happy to answer any comments, make videos for you on any subject at all that you're having difficulty with. And I look forward to hearing from you soon.